two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two. Part 3 You will hear two university students discussing their course and a project they are doing together. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 25. Water is essential for life, and in parts of the world it's a precious commodity. The distribution of water, however, is quite varied. Many locations have plenty of it, while others have very little. Water exists on Earth as a solid, liquid or gas. Oceans, rivers, clouds and rain, all of which contain water, are in a frequent state of change. Surface water evaporates, cloud water precipitates, rainfall infiltrates the ground, etc. However, the total amount of the Earth's water does not change. The circulation and conservation of Earth's water is called the hydrologic cycle. Balances the amount of water in the ocean, in the atmosphere, and on the land. We get our understanding of how the cycle operates from research in climatology and hydrology. So, who can tell me what climatology is? It's the study of climate and, ah, uh, the causes and effects of different climates. That's right. And what is hydrology, Sarah? Well, hydro means water. So it's something to do with water, like the study of water. Yes. The prefix hydro does refer to water. The hydrologic cycle is the water cycle, and hydrology is the study of the water, the distribution and effect of the water on the Earth's surface and in the soil and layers of rock. Think of climatology as the atmospheric phase, and hydrology as the land phase of the water cycle. Climatologists study the role of solar energy in the cycle. They're mainly concerned with the atmospheric phase of the cycle, how solar energy drives the cycle through the uh, processes of evaporation, atmospheric circulation and precipitation. Water is continuously absorbed into the atmosphere as vapour, evaporation. Then, water vapour is transported through the atmosphere, atmospheric circulation, and returns to the earth as rain, hail or snow, precipitation. The amount of water evaporating from oceans exceeds precipitation over oceans, and excess water vapour is moved by wind to the land. What about the land phase? The land phase of the cycle is the concern of hydrologists. Hydrologists study the vast quantities of water in the land phase of the cycle, how water moves over and through the land, and how it's stored on or within the earth. 
of the overland surfaces of the precipitation that falls over land. Small amounts evaporate while still in the air and uh, re-enter the atmosphere directly. The rest of it reaches the surface of the land. The water that falls to earth is stored on the surface of lakes or it penetrates the surface or it runs off over the surface and flows in rivers to the ocean. Some of the water is stored temporarily in the upper soil layers and used later by trees and plants. When it rains, yes? So the transfer of land water to the oceans is called runoff, right? Exactly. Runoff is the movement of land water to the oceans, chiefly in the form of rivers, lakes, and streams. Runoff consists of precipitation that neither evaporates, transpires, nor penetrates the surface to become groundwater. Even the smallest streams are connected to larger rivers that carry billions of gallons of water into oceans worldwide. Now you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the conversation and answer questions 26 to 30. I was, um, I wondered if that makes trees and plants part of the hydrologic cycle. I mean, they take in water and the water moves through them. And then later on, ah, uh, the water evaporates from their leaves. I'm glad you mentioned that, John. Plants do play an important role in the land phase of the cycle and are therefore part of the cycle. Trees and plants circulate and store water. They draw it up through their roots and return it to the atmosphere through their leaves during evapotranspiration. When it rains, if the soil is already saturated, water will seep downward through the upper soil layers and possibly reach the water table. When it reaches the water table, it passes into groundwater storage. Most of the groundwater later return to the surface, either as springs or as stream flow, supplying water to plants. Eventually, all of the water falling on land makes its way back to the ocean. The movement of water from land to the ocean is called runoff. Runoff and groundwater together balance the amount of water that moves from the ocean to the land. Every molecule of water in the natural system eventually circulates through the hydrologic cycle. Tremendous quantities of water are cycled annually, and, as John pointed out, living organisms, plants and animals as well, are also part of the cycle. Since water is a large part of the mass of most organisms, living organisms store and use water, since water is the, uh, solvent for most biological reactions. That is the end of part 3.